we're going to look at a pretty interesting number puzzle involving a lot of divisibility tricks. So in particular, suppose that we're given 14 factorial is equal to, well, this number right here where we're missing the digits A, B, and C. And so can we determine those digits? And you'll see that we can. And along the way, we're going to use the pretty standard divisibility trick by 9, which says that you should look at the digit sum, and the divisibility trick by 11, which says that you should look at the alternating digit sum. Okay, so let's look at the 9 rule first. In other words, we're going to impose that this number is divisible by 9. How do we know it's divisible by 9? Well, 14 factorial is 14 times 13 times 12 times 11 times 10 times 9. There's a 9 there. So we do know it's divisible by 9. Okay, so let's take its digit sum. So we have 8 plus 7 plus A plus 7 plus 8 plus B plus C and then plus 1 plus 2. And then we don't really need the plus 0 or plus 0, so we need this to be divisible by 9. In other words, congruent to 0 mod 9. And now let's see if we can simplify this a bit at a time. So notice that 8 plus 1 is 9, so we can just disregard this 8 plus 1 because that's 0 mod 9. That part's divisible by 9. And then let's look at this. We've got 7 plus 2 is also 9, so we can disregard those as well. And we're simply left with this 8 plus 7. But now I'm going to view this 7 as a negative 2 mod 9, which allows me to look at this whole thing as 6 mod 9. Now, moving it over to the other side of the congruence will give us a 3, because, you know, subtracting by 6 is the same thing as adding 3 mod 9. And that gives us the following equation. So we'll have a plus b plus c is congruent to 3 modulo 9. And notice that gives us some possible values of a plus b plus c. So note that a plus b plus c comes from the set 3. Well, it could also be equal to 12 because that's 9 plus 3. Then if we add 9 one more time, we get 21. But notice that it couldn't be equal to 30, which is what we would get if we added 9 one more time because that would require a, b, and c to all be equal to 10. But since these are digits of a number that are base 10, these are between 0 and 9. So I guess I didn't explicitly say that, but I think that's implicitly built into all of this. Okay, so here is our first condition. We have a plus b plus c comes from the set 3, 12, 21. Okay, so next up, let's impose the divisibility condition on 11. And that means we need to look at the alternating sum. Okay, so we'll have... 8 minus 7, and then it'll be plus a minus 7, and then plus 8, and then minus b plus c minus 1 plus 2, and then nominally minus 0 plus 0. And like I said before, that needs to be congruent to 0 mod 11 because that should be um, divisible by 11. So let's simplify this a bit at a time. So notice that 8 minus 7 is 1. And then here's another 8 minus 7, so that's also 1. Oh, but look at this. We've got a 1 minus 1, so those cancel. Notice we haven't reduced mod 11 or anything. That's just from adding numbers together. Okay, but now we've got 1 plus 2 is 3. That's all of the numbers left. So we can move that to the other side of the congruence to get negative 3, but negative 3 is 8 mod 11. So that gives us this equation. We have a minus b plus c is congruent to 8 modulo 11. But that's going to give us some values of a minus b plus c. And what are those? So we know that a minus b plus c must come from the following set. So 8 
or 19. But that's really all we can have here. And in fact, in order to achieve 19, we would need b to be equal to zero. Because otherwise, if b is bigger than zero, then we would have a and c add up to 20 or larger. But again, that's impossible. Okay, so let's maybe put a box around this as well. But notice that we've got two things that look like equations, but three unknowns. So we probably need to impose some other divisibility tricks, but we don't have enough written down over here. We only have two. So now we're gonna impose a divisibility trick by 32. And this uses the fact that 100,000 is congruent to zero mod 32. That's because, you know, 100,000 is just 10 to the fifth power, but that gives you a two to the fifth power. Okay, so our number is pretty clearly congruent to zero mod 32 because we hit a lot of twos along the way from 14 down to the bottom. We've got a two attached to the 14, a two attached to the 12, the 10, three attached to the eight. Well, that's already enough to get a multiple of 32. Okay, so the rule for 32 is that a number is divisible by 32 if and only if its last, let's see, five digits are divisible by 32. So that means we have C1200 must be congruent to zero mod 32. But let's write this out. This means that 10,000 times C plus 1,200 must be equal to 32 times some number n. But now let's divide this by 16 and see what we get. So dividing both sides by 16, well, we'll get 625c over here, and we'll have 75 over here, and we'll have 2n. That means this thing 625c plus 75 must be even but that only occurs if C is odd. So immediately we know that C is an odd number. So, you know, that didn't really restrict much of the other stuff, but that at least helps us out. So we know that C is odd. And now we're gonna do one more divisibility rule, and that's the divisibility rule by seven. There's actually several, but there's one that works like this. If you take the alternating sum of three digit chunks from the right to the left, then you know that should be congruent to what you started with mod seven. Or in other words, that's divisible by seven if and only if your original number is divisible by seven. Okay, so let's do that. So starting right to left, we have 200 minus, let's see, this number BC1. And then after that, it'll be plus, this number A78, and then minus 87. So like I said, this needs to be congruent to zero modulo seven. But now let's expand that out a little bit just to help us. So we'll have 200 minus one, and then it'll, that'll be, we'll have minus 100B minus 10C, that's the expansion of this BC1 thing, and then plus 100A, plus 78 minus 87. So we've got something like that. But then putting this all together and moving things around just like we did before, what we'll see is that 100 times A minus B, and then minus 10 times C must be actually congruent to six modulo seven. Okay, cool. But can we simplify that? Well, actually we can. And that is by reducing the number 100 and the number 10 mod seven. So notice that 10 is the same thing as three mod seven, but three is the same thing as negative four. So we might as well write this as plus four times. Seven. And then 100 is two more than 98, which is a multiple of seven. So we might as well exchange this 100 for two. But now expanding this out, we have 2a minus 2b plus 4c is congruent to 6 modulo 7. Oh, but that means that a minus b plus 2c 
must be congruent to 3 mod 7. Now that's going to give us a pretty similar condition to these two. I'll maybe let you think about it, but we will write it on the next board. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so this is where we ended up on the last board. So we knew that C was odd and we had these conditions on combinations of A, B, and C. And now I'd like to do something about the parity. So let's notice that A plus C plus, that A plus B plus C and A minus B plus C, these have the same parity. And that essentially means that they're congruent to the same thing, mod two. And that's because positive one and negative one are congruent mod two. Okay, but notice that this second or this third one differs from the second one by adding C, which we know is odd. So we know that this, these two have opposite parity to, let's see, A plus B, to A minus B plus 2C. So that means if both of these are even, that one has to be odd. If both of these are odd, that one has to be even. And from here, we just go through with a case-by-case -case argument. And let's maybe start with the first possibility that A plus B plus C is equal to three. So coming from this bit of the set. Oh, but let's notice that A minus B plus C is less than or equal to A plus B plus C, because it has this subtraction instead of this addition, which is equal to three. But Notice that because of this parity argument, A minus B plus C must be equal to 19, but then simultaneously it has to be less than or equal to three, so that's impossible. So that removes from our possibilities the number three for A plus B plus C. Okay, so now let's move on to the next possibility, and that would be A plus B plus C equals 12, which is even. But by this parity argument right here, that means that A minus B plus C must be equal to eight. So those two are even. That means we need an odd number for A minus B plus two C. So that tells us that A minus B plus two C is equal to three or 17. Now we just have to check each of those individually. So let's maybe check the three first. So we have A plus B plus C is equal to 12. A minus B plus C is equal to eight. And then A minus B plus two C is equal to three. Now let's solve that system of equations. But now those second two equations are just totally built for us to calculate the value of C by taking their difference. So taking their difference, we'll see that C is equal to negative five, because we have three minus eight. Oh, but like C is a digit from a number. That's just between zero and nine. So C cannot be equal to a negative number. So C equals negative five does not work. That's a contradiction. So that moves us on to this other possibility where A minus B plus two C is 17. So let's write that down here. So A plus B plus C is equal to 12. A minus B plus C is equal to eight, and A minus B plus twice C is equal to 17. So now we can play the same sort of game to get a value of C very, very quickly. So subtracting those, we'll get C equals nine, and then throwing this C equals nine maybe into these first two equations will give us something nice. Notice we'll have A plus B is equal to three, and we'll have A minus B is equal to negative one. Oh, but that means that A is equal to one, and B is equal to two. And so that gives us our first possibility over here. So I'll maybe put this in this magenta box. So our first possibility is that A is equal to one, B is equal to two, and C is equal to nine. Okay, so let's see if we get any other possibility. Okay, going down the possibilities, we just worked through the case when A plus B plus C was equal to 12. 
And working through everything that came from that, we got the following solution that A is one, B is two, and C is nine. Now we have to make sure that we don't get any other solutions. Otherwise, we've got to do something else to make sure that we pick the correct solution. Okay, so let's move on to this other one. So we know that A plus B plus C is equal to 21. That's the one remaining case. But these two guys have the same parity. But since these two have the same parity, what do we know? Well, we know that A minus B plus C must be equal to 19 because that's the only odd number in that list. And then we know that this last one has an opposite parity. So that means that A minus B plus 2C can either be, well, it has to be even, so it can be 10 or 24, but I don't think it's gonna get that far. And now we're gonna work through each of these cases. So let's maybe work through the case first when it's equal to 10, and then afterwards we'll work through the case when it's equal to 24. Maybe I'll leave that as homework. Okay, so we can subtract these two equations like we do, and we'll see that C is equal to negative nine. So that's clearly a contradiction. So since that was so quick, let's move on to the other one. Okay, so there we have that. So again, we can subtract these first two equations and we'll see immediately that C is equal to five. That's 24 minus 19. Now let's take this value of C equals five and plug it into these first two equations and see what that gives us. So we'll have A plus B is equal to, let's see, 21 minus five, which is 16. And then we'll have A minus B is equal to 19 minus five, which is equal to 14. Okay, but now we can add these two equations and we'll see that 2A is equal to 30, which means that A is equal to 15. But that's not a possibility because again, these represent digits of a 10, <clears throat> because these represent digits of a base 10 number. But that really covered everything starting with this value of 21 for A plus B plus C. So there we have it. These are, this is our only remaining possibility. That means these values of A, B, and C must be the digits in this expansion of 14 factorial. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpinmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.